Well, Sean, we said on Thursday that every time Zufa seems to come to Texas, they put on a memorable event. I don't know if we expected what transpired here tonight at UFC 185. Let's quickly run it down. Of course, this is the MMAfighting.com post-fight wrap-up show. Rafael Dos Anjos is the new UFC lightweight champion. I repeat, Rafael Dos Anjos dominated Anthony Pettis to become the new UFC lightweight champion. Joanna Jacek is the new UFC strawweight champion. I repeat, Joanna Jacek is the new UFC strawweight champion. She dominated Carla Esparza. Let's talk about the two title changes first. The first time since UFC 92, two titles changed on the same night. Rafael Dos Anjos, you didn't pick it. A lot of people didn't pick it. Do you have any words for what we just saw? I am blown away. I mean, who? I don't even know. I'm speechless at this point. I, I'm blown away. That was a complete and utter destruction to a level that I don't think. I mean, people, maybe some people picked the upset. I'm sure some people did, but I don't think anybody saw that. That was just complete dominance from start to finish. And there was never a moment in that fight where Pettis was really in it. It wasn't the Clay Guida fight. That was more smothering. This was punishment. Yeah. This was beating him up. This was, I mean, it, I mean, look what he did to his face. Pettis didn't even show up to the press conference. Dana White telling me afterwards he thinks he has a concussion. Who knows what happened to the eye around seven or so stitches, but who knows what kind of damage. You know, it's amazing how this guy has improved every time out. And, and I'm wondering if now he'll finally get the credit that he deserves because he probably should have gotten a few fights ago. Yeah. But after doing that to Anthony Pettis, that's something we've never seen before. And doing that with a torn MCL, yes. which he just said in the press conference that he didn't wrestle for the entire rest of the camp. Yeah, three weeks. And he, how many times did he take down Pettis? I haven't looked at the stats, but right. it was virtually at will. I, it's, it's unbelievable. He looked like a different weight class than Pettis in there. He looked like he was just massive, and his, his kicks were just thunderous to the body, and everything about, everything about that fight was just so impressive. Do you think RDA is just that much better than Anthony, or do you think Anthony was off tonight? I mean, do you think this is one of those Mike Brown, Uriah Faber situations where this guy just has his number? I mean, it was that one-sided, or do you think if they do it again, this could be different? I, I mean, I'm not going to say anything to take away from RDA yeah. at this point. I, that, was, that was unbelievable. That was an absolutely unbelievable performance. That was probably one of the most surprising uh, just – start to finish 25 minute title fights that I can remember just in terms of going into it with expectations and then just having it completely blown away kind of reminds me a little bit of Dillashaw versus Brown where sure. it's just like we didn't even understand it, it's I tweeted this and it's it, the more you watch MMA the less we understand we we know nothing about this yeah, yeah, yeah. it is impossible to predict a systematic breakdown it was it was unbelievable yeah. absolutely yeah I'm just I'm just leaning on you for more words. You're the writer. You're the guy with, with the words. Uh, Dana White saying afterwards that Anthony Pettis won't get a rematch, that it's going to go to the winner of Khabib Nurmagomedov versus sure. Donald Cerrone. By the way, he's fought both those guys already. He lost to Nurmagomedov. He beat Cerrone. That's when all this started to really come into play, at least for me. Do you think that's the right call? Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. the only call you can make. And that's, that's the kind of nice thing about a night like tonight where it's so surprising. It really sets up a lot of interesting storylines moving forward because RDA already beat Cerrone and he got utterly demolished by Khabib and that was only what like a year and a half ago yeah. which is remarkable so I mean if that if that ends up being the next fight is Khabib versus RDA too that's that's such an intriguing fight because since then RDA looks like an absolute murderer sure. but that fight was so one-sided I have no idea how to call that fight at this point I'm totally putting you on the spot here but what would you do with Anthony Pettis next it's a good question. I think, I don't know. I'd give him Nate Diaz. I'd give him Nate, Nate Diaz. Diaz. I'd give him Nate Diaz. I feel like that's a fun fight. Yeah. There's a little bit of history there. Sure. Nate Diaz is already kind of talking a little bit on Twitter about it. It's, yeah, I don't know. Is he talking like, tonight? I missed that. Yeah, he tweeted something about rookie and destruction or oh, something gosh. like that. Hashtag rookie, hashtag destruction. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a fun fight. It's a good way to also start building Anthony Pettis back up because he still is one of the stars of the division. Mm -hmm. He still is one of the best fighters in the division. So I think at this point you go, you go with a slow build on Anthony Pettis. You don't need to rush him back in because that was a really, really destructive performance. The one that comes to mind for me is Michael Johnson because Michael Johnson is on the cusp of top five. He called out Benson Henderson. I'd prefer if Benson stayed at 170. There isn't really anyone else for Michael Johnson. He's rising as well. I feel like that's a fight that could make sense. Hate it, love it, don't care. Uh, I, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. You're on. You're on the Nate Diaz bandwagon. 
I'm not I, I, the Nate Diaz is more appealing to sure, me sure. just because of you know again there's already a storyline built in. I like I like to see Michael Johnson continue to rise. I don't feel like we should you know cut cut a contender short in that in that regard and just put him against the former champion. But I mean it's a fun fight. Let's talk business. Do you think this is bad for the UFC? You got a Reebok yeah. deal, Monster Energy, Wheaties box. He's on that thing with the belt. Yeah. This is a guy who has a tremendous look. He's very marketable. They're they're very proud of him. They're always pushing him. He's no longer the champion. Is this is this bad? I mean, if you be honest with yourself, it it probably is bad, right? Like Anthony Pettis was the guy. He yeah. was the guy being talked about as the next superstar. He had this plan for himself for this year to really become that next level superstar, that John Jones, that Ronda Rousey. And he had everything going for him. He had the look, he had the sponsorships, he had the confidence, he had the swagger. Yeah, it, it RDA again, I'm not gonna take anything away from RDA because this is his night yeah. and he was fantastic. But he isn't the guy that if you put him on a pay-per-view, he's going to headline right. and it's going to sell, you know, however, X many pay-per-views and people are going to be really into it. And of course, it wasn't too long ago that we were saying this is the end of Brazilian MMA. And now all of a sudden they have three champions. Yes. One's an interim champ, but still they got three champions. And we must mention not a great night for Rufus Sport because Anthony's brother, Sergio, also losing on the undercard. Now let's talk about the co-main event. Ioana Young Jacek, like we said all week long. She stole the show. I mean, yeah. she has become a media darling, and the fans love her as well. She says all the right things. She's captivating. She's entertaining, and she went out there and stuffed every takedown but one, blew her up. I mean, she, she, she finished her with a standing TKO. Carlos Barza, of course, now former champion. I mean, that was equally as impressive for her to come in there and do that, right? Absolutely. And just like I said with RDA, looking like he was a different weight class entirely than Pettis. Yeah. Joanna looked like an entirely different weight class than Carla. She was massive in, compared to Carla. And it, it almost felt like once she got that first takedown defended, and then she got that second takedown defended, yeah. right after that second one, it seemed like that's when the tide began to turn. It was like, oh, man, this, Carla seemed to realize, oh, this is going to be a lot more difficult than I imagined. And you're right. Where, where the UFC may have lost one potential superstar in Anthony Pettis, they may have just gained another potential superstar in Joanna. She is a stud. I, the, the potential for her at this point is massive. You're right. Fans latched onto her so quickly. This is a woman who nine months ago was making her debut in Cage Warriors. Mm. Now she's a UFC champion. The idea of doing like a card of a Rousey, Yen Jacek, that, that, that would be crazy. That would be a huge event. Yeah, nice to see them tweeting to each other afterwards. You know, the UFC is making its debut in Poland, a hotbed. I mean, KSW has been killing it in Poland for many years, and now they have a Polish champion, just the yeah. third European champion in UFC history. I don't know about the ticket sales there, but you have to think her coming back home now, the media is going to latch onto this. That event is going to be pretty cool for a, a sort of coming home party, if you will. Now, I want to ask you about um, uh, Carlos Barza. I noted uh, during that intro with Bruce Buffer that, it felt very much like UFC 118, BJ Penn. She was not moving. I mean, it almost seemed like the fight was lost right then and there. She had no reaction. Joanna is, is playing to the crowd. She's putting up the one. She's doing the belt thing. And Carla's just standing there. Now, she has been known to be a bit anxious, and she's kind of a nervous you know, fighter going into her fights and always performs when the lights are on. But that seemed a bit off, didn't it? It did seem off, but it always seems off, right? Like that's that just more than usual, in my opinion, at least. I don't know. I mean, maybe I have to go back and look, but it, it just struck me as like, wow, she's not even moving. Remember BJ Penn UFC 118 when they were putting down the banner and it was like hitting him in the head and he wasn't yeah. moving? It felt like that. And then he lost to Frankie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree, but it all, it's also weird because every time you, I see yeah. her demeanor, it's that's, it, I feel the same way where it's just like, she doesn't look like she's in this at all. And then usually she goes and just performs fantastic and, I just did she she wasn't even setting up her takedowns yeah. after the first few minutes and it was just it was just a completely demoralizing fight I, I can't remember a title fight where a champion has looked that bad uh over the course of a couple rounds and I don't know I'm, I'm just blown away I'm just blown away by those the co-main event and the main event I got the impression from the LA press conference to uh the Thursday media day here in Dallas to yesterday's weigh-ins that Joanna was getting in her head. She was getting under her skin. It seemed like she was, she wasn't quite sure how to deal with all this, the up in your face, the trash talking. Do you, do you, do you feel the same way? In retrospect, it seems like yeah. that because that is one of those things where I don't feel like you understand how to handle it until you've actually dealt with it. Right. And I don't, I don't know if Carla's ever experienced something like that. Yeah. And especially because the fans did really embrace it and embrace Joanna, and she became a, sort of this mini star over the week. 
in retrospect, that may have absolutely rattled Carla. Johnny Hendricks picks up a win. He's back yeah. in the win column. He defeated Matt Brown tonight. I thought it was a, a very dominant performance. I thought it was pretty impressive. Dana White wasn't all that impressed, telling me afterwards that you know he, he wasn't necessarily blown away. Uh, Johnny was very critical of his performance, but still said that he wants that title shot. Do you think he did enough to deserve it? Um, did enough to deserve it? I don't know. I mean, I just I wouldn't like to see him get that title shot. You would not. No, no, because I'm I'm getting sick of this rushing back sure. into trilogies and rematches. There's a huge division. Just get, let's get some fresh stuff going. Tyron Woodley's calling for. He that. is very vocal. You like that fight? I like that fight a lot. Yeah. It makes sense. They're both up there. I think Tyron's ranked number three for whatever the rankings mean. Sure. But I mean that that makes sense to me. They're, that's an interesting fight. They're both kind of in this. I mean, I guess Johnny's much higher in, in regard to closer to the championship but they're both in that space where it makes sense and it's a fun fight i like that fight a lot as well i think it's a great styles matchup i also like it because the welterweight title fight is happening in july and that means yeah. johnny will be out for a very long time but can i just say something you know i thought everyone was so critical of him i mean would it have been smart for johnny Hendricks to just stand in a phone booth with matt brown and slug it away i mean sometimes i feel like the way we view these fights is like we just want to be entertained this guy's a family he's coming off a title loss that was the smart fight that's yeah. what you do against matt brown and it baffles me that some people don't realize that absolutely i mean he dominated matt brown and there's no other way the to way you that. should dominate him with wrestling yeah yeah you you play to your opponent's weaknesses you're not going to play to your opponent's strengths just to please the fans right. uh and, and and that's the that's one thing i i another reason why i would really like to see johnny take another fight is because you see him in these three round fights and it's a it's a different johnny hendrix than these five round fights he has the ability to really drown people in three rounds where he kind of because because he kind of fades in these five round fights i'd like to see him continue to adapt continue to adapt to his body he seemed really happy in regards to you know this weight change and everything i'd like to see him continue to adapt and move that forward and really get some more momentum going i feel like if they booked him versus whoever wins uh the welterweight title there's not going to be that much uh enthusiasm for it i was blown away by alistair overeem he seemed more relaxed yeah quicker he just seemed you know you always kind of felt in the back of your mind that he might get knocked out because we've seen this before where he dominates a fight and then he gets knocked out he gets too comfortable it almost happened at the end of the third Roy Nelson ran out of time and kind of stalled maybe a little too much but what did you make of that performance because I thought it might have been even more impressive than the Brock Lesnar win absolutely it was 14 minutes of brilliance yeah. and then the end kind of right. marred it a little bit but Oh, man, he was busting up that belly so yeah. bad. He, Roy Nelson looked like a burn victim at one point just because of the kicks to the body and right. just he was crushing those ribs. It was great. It was absolutely great. And you're right. I don't know what this is about Overeem, yeah. but there's like this weird thing where we're kind of just waiting for that other shoe to fall. And right. Yeah, I don't know. It's a lot, of, a lot of props to Nelson. He took some big shots, but that was all Alistair Overeem. I think the fight that makes the most sense is him versus JDS. Yes. I mean, we've been waiting for that for so long. Yes. I haven't seen this man this excited in a long time. You like that fight, clearly. Absolutely. I like that <laughs> fight in December. Sure. I think that that fight needs to or happen. Two years ago. Yeah, man. Like, that's a fight that needs to happen just because it needs to happen. We, we were supposed to happen before. It yeah. didn't happen. We're not going to get that many more chances for that fight to happen, and I would really still like to see that fight, and right now it makes perfect sense. And they hate each other. It's always fun. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay, let's quickly talk about Henry Cejudo. Great performance, yeah. and I think he just blew away Dana White at the press conference <laughs> with the fluent Spanish. He's got the look. He's got the inspirational stories. I mean, he's right out of, like, an NBC Olympic, uh, right. like, uh, uh, you know, one of those, like, segments, those mushy segments they do, and he comes out to the NBC Olympic theme. I mean, this guy is great. Did you think that, okay, I mean, it was, a good, it was a good performance. He's back at 125, but I feel like we sometimes want to rush these guys to, to these title shots so we get excited about them. Did you think that he proved that, I mean, I mean, one or two fights away from being in that discussion? Yeah, going into it, I thought if he won, and he won impressively, he was going to be one fight away okay. just because the division is so shallow. I still feel that way. I was actually, I, I saw some people getting down on his performance. I thought it was really good. I mean, Chris Kyrgios is a guy who, he, his only losses at flyweight are to Formiga, DJ and John Moraga. Like, if you're included in that company now, and Suhudo, that's not bad company to be with. I'd really like to see him get a top five guy to see whether, you know, maybe we should slow it down. Like, like Horiguchi, I would have liked to see Horiguchi get another fight. Right. I'd like to see uh, Suhudo get a top five fight so we know whether, you know, he's ready or not. But I, I was absolutely impressed. He's on a different level athletically than all the rest of these guys so far that he's been able to fight. I say Ian McCall. I think that fight okay. makes a lot of sense. Uh, before we go, we have one minute. So many great performances on the undercard. I mean, that was one of the best undercards in a while. What's one that sticks out? Number one that sticks out. Number one that sticks out. I really liked what Joseph Duffy did. Yeah. He, he stole mine. 
I knew you were going to go. I don't know if you heard this, <laughs> but Joseph Duffy is the last man to be. I don't know. Did you hear that? No, that's that's, that's a that's, that's a, a huge. No, they should really capitalize on that. I mean, that's big. Last man to be Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor was fighting for the belt. He's a big popular fight. And and they're both Irish. Oh man, you should propose that yeah. to somebody. I think that we're not picking up it's on big. that. It's big. But he has to go down to 145. They were hinting at it. But it was a great performance, right? I don't want to steal your. <laughs> You're not stealing anything. Yeah, no, it was absolutely great. I think. He was given an opponent where he was really able to, uh, it was almost a showcase fight, and right. he, he performed admirably. He, he did exactly what he wanted to. He picked, stood back, picked him apart, and he got an excellent finish. Ross Pearson, Elias Theodorou, uh, Ryan Benoit with a great yeah. win. I mean, a comeback win, kicked him in the butt on the way out, but, I mean, bad that was not great. Pettis, bad night in the Pettis household. Yeah. A tough night, but what a night here in Dallas, Texas. Once again, the UFC delivers. UFC 185 will go down as one of those nights where you're like, wow, what just happened? I think it's going to take us a couple of days to digest this all. And guess what? We can do that on Monday on the MMA Hour. Can't wait for that. Cheap plug, right? That great got, to, got to use this got platform it. to do that. Anyhow, it has been a great week here in Dallas. Thank you so much for watching our coverage all week long. For Sean, the new, the new preview show, Darling. They love you. The comment section, they love you. And by the way, they will break you down yeah, in a matter of no time. So soak it up right now. But they love them right now. That is Sean. I am Ariel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on Monday for the MMA Hour.